Welcome to episode number 269 of the Effortless Swimming Podcast. My guest today is a repeat offender. It's Carl, Carl Reader. Welcome back to the podcast. This is probably the fourth time I've had you on here to talk about how the body moves, how we can do things outside of the pool to become better swimmers. So I wanted to get you on today, talk about a couple of case studies, a couple of people that you've been working with and, and some changes that you've helped some swimmers go through outside of the pool to help them swim better, but primarily remove the injury or change the uh, the way that they're moving so that they're not injured and not in pain because I think that's really your your specialty is helping people understand what the root cause of some of the injuries that they're having are so welcome to the podcast oh Brendan good to be here again and uh, yeah always great to love working with the members and yeah it's always good to be learning new things and so yeah thanks for having me back yeah great great to have you and your functional movement courses inside of our membership and i know a lot of the members end up going through that maybe not going through the whole course maybe choosing a couple of different things that is more relevant to what they're looking to focus on and uh, and then a lot of them end up getting in contact with you if they've got particular injuries what have you seen in the last couple of months since i last chat had you on that's really stood out to you what sort of injuries are you seeing but yeah, it's a good question. I've had a lot of members. It's been wonderful working with them, just reaching out, especially with shoulder problems. Um, we know that's quite a common injury and, and lower back. And um, just really this thing of struggling to, this feeling of having to haul themselves through the water and putting too much pressure on their shoulders and um, just really helping them to, you know, understand like how they can get around that and, and, and work the right muscles to to build that strength. And we can we can get into that, you know, dive deeper into that now, like that just getting in that the body connected that there's actually a connection issue there um at the at the roots like you talked about getting to the roots um, which has been very interesting because it's a common i see that i'm you know work with swimming every day so it's a common common problem i think there'd be a big crossover from the swimmers that would describe themselves as hauling themselves through the the water i think it'd be a big crossover from how they would all swim i think that there'd probably be a lot of similarities there with how they all swim and then you'd probably see that play out in some of the exercises and the movements that you have people go through and what comes to mind when i think of someone hauling themselves through the the water is that they're probably not using the lower half of their body very well they're kick they might not even have one where the feet are just dragging through the water their rotation they're probably too flat they're probably very very flat with their hips and it's just all upper body and when it's all upper body that's when the upper traps the neck shoulders are just are doing the majority of the work but if you can get the whole body to work together with the right amount of rotation an effective kick then swimming is so much more enjoyable and it takes this the pressure off it takes the the effort out of the the upper body so what do you how do you go about kind of diagnosing where this might be coming from yeah i mean so you know we're taking through like a full like body movement assessment but what i've picked up now recently i just also over just years of working with back problems is just that there's a weak core and, you know, if you talk to most people, if they, whether they do sport or not, the average person knows that you've got to have a strong core. But what I'm finding is that that even though people are doing sort of like Pilates-based exercises, maybe they're planking, maybe they're doing um, some sort of like, you know, CrossFit, they're just struggling to, to actually get the core to engage. So a lot of them will say, I feel my upper core, but not my lower core, or I feel my pecs and my glutes, but not my core, or I feel my left-hand core, but not my right-hand core. It's quite interesting as you, as you work with the guys. And... You know, if, if one thing I've also picked up is when the lower core is weak, then the hips and the buttocks and, and, the, and the, 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 the hip flexors, they really get tight. And like you've talked about that stiffness to get the legs. So once we get that core connected, and that's a lot of work I do online, it makes a huge difference because now they get the power uh, generated from this, from this sort of, um, you know, I really want the listeners to picture the muscles as like battery packs. So, you know, those big torches you have, you have to stack the batteries on top of each other. It's kind of like, that's kind of like your abs and the, and, the, and the core muscles. They're like a battery pack. And if there's one of those batteries is, is not holding a charge or is, is, you know, not working, then it, the whole body's just, just disconnected. And so that's a big part of what I'm doing is trying to help these swimmers like connect, get connected basically. And how are you going about assessing that? Well, the thing is, is, is to try to find uh, what are the, the things that, that could sort of break up that connection. And so one of those is posture. We talked about poor posture, um, old injuries, 
Um, then also just weaknesses in, in, in the uh, tightness of the fascia. So, you know, you probably, we've talked about this before, but your fascia is like that, that, that um, connective tissue around the muscles that is around pretty much every organ. And that's, that's referred to as a semiconductor. So that means that electrons can actually go down those chains or those lines at the speed of light. So you've got this sort of like, so you can imagine if that's tight or damaged or the scar tissue there. Um, there's emotions as well, which we don't touch on, but it's just important to bring to people's mind that strong emotions can also uh, sort of tighten up the connection through there. But my big thing is just, to, just to really working on the posture, like getting them into better alignment. Once we align the pelvis and align the body correctly, then suddenly they feel, oh, I can feel my, my core muscles are working. Um, but just basically asking them, do you feel the core? No. <laughs> or do you, do you feel the glutes? No, they don't feel. And, and they can be even in a plank position and they say, I just feel my back or I feel my neck. And, I, and I'll say, do you feel anything in the tummy? Like nothing. So it's, it, which is, you know, you think, okay, hang on a minute. That should be really targeting. So those are sort of the diagnostics, very simple questions. Mm. And then once you dig a little bit deeper into all right, what the what the issues are, what and I remember you you sort of sent through a, a case study that you had recently with someone with with a shoulder issue, and you didn't start with the shoulder. You started somewhere else. Can you talk a little bit about what you what you're looking at there? Yeah, yeah, great. I mean, she had her her posture was you know she had a, like a very high overextended lower back. Um, we went to straight away into the glutes because you know me the glutes is trying to get that movement that functional movement to open up a lower back, do lower back stretches. Uh, once you got the glutes firing, which she said she had an experience, and that's also quite common, again, like clients saying to me, you know, members saying, I just, I never feel my glutes. And so once that uh, started working, then we started doing some core strengthening exercises. And um, that was doing the, the going back now, going back to like plank type movements and Pilates based stuff, which is really interesting because, you know, you know, me and the, uh, you know, <laughs> members have heard me talk about glutes and, and core and squatting. But it was taking the members back now and just going back to sort of even like Pilates based exercises and the plank. Now the plank, um, the plank on the elbows, in my opinion, is not so functional. Um, but I get my clients to plank in a sort of a push up plank position, um, and we just modify that a lot because that sort of brings in the pecs, the serratus anterior, it kind of connects the chain through the ground, um, and you can even get them doing it on a box or a chair for those who are really weak. But really just trying to get that that core. And you know, we're doing start off with sometimes it's holding it for seven seconds. I know around the world you get these like plank competitions, you can hold it for like an hour kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> but it's really just like starting off with seven seconds, building out that strength, coming back and saying, Do you feel it? Yes, I feel the top part, not the bottom part. Then we've got to go down and mobilize the lower back and um, and each level of the spine, each battery pack has got a level of the spine. So when I when I when they tell me that they don't feel a certain part of the core working, we go mobilize that spine, try rotate it, try and unlock it, do stretches, then go back to the plank. So it's it's a bit of a it's a bit of like a jigsaw puzzle trying to figure it out. But it, it it's it, once you get stuff working, it's like a puzzle. It comes together quite nicely. And what I've found personally is that with a lot of injuries, unless it's uh, something more sinister, I guess, is if you can if you can move through the different you know, parts of your body, you can get blood flow to those injured injured parts. That's when it starts to to heal. Because quite often in the past, I've heard physios who aren't familiar with swimming, they're like, take a month out of the pool, take six weeks out of the pool, and let it rest. Now, in some cases, that might be what what's required, but more often than not, you're better off actually to keep it moving and and adjusting what you're doing. And you can't take six weeks out of the pool without seeing a yeah. big drop off in your swim strength, your feel for the water, your kick, all these things. So swimmers need to stay active. They need to stay in the pool. And so that advice, Absolutely. yeah, I, and I hear it from other coaches as well. Like they will only send their swimmers to physios who know swimming uh, because there's often a, a big gap for those that aren't familiar with it. So what what sort of, uh, with that, ha moving through the different positions and getting blood flow to these injured, injured parts, what role does that have in recovery or, or healing? Well, I mean, it's a good, you make a great point there. I mean, she just said to me in, in, the, in the testimonial that she said when she rested the shoulder, it got worse, you know, so like, and she said, yeah. so there you make, you, you're on, on point there. It's, I, I think it's, it's a good, it's a good segue into this thing, which I've been following this guy called Dr. Jerry, Jerry Tennant. He's, he, he's got a thing called voltage is healing. 
And so what's interesting, you mentioned blood flow, and yes, that brings oxygen and clearing out toxins and, and healing. But what's what I'm on this thing is like is the 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 the, the voltage, the energy, the, the power supply that comes to the shoulder through the chains, through the core muscles is where I feel like that's been a major breakthrough. So like when you're doing a shoulder press, just a simple press here, most people just get it in the, in the deltoids and a little bit of pick. But actually, it's got a lot of that power comes from the lower core. So like there's, there's, like, there's like energy that comes up through there. Uh, and the Chinese talk about the energy meridians. You've got the spleen meridians, stomach meridians. Um, and for me, those are like, yeah, those are just sort of battery packs. But so it's to think of it as current that's flowing. I mean, your shoulder muscles, yeah, they, the top muscles, the delts are quite strong, but the rotator cuff muscles, are, they're quite small and, and they're not really not as significant when it comes to generating power. The power's got to come from the pec, lat, like we talked to, we'll talk about later, um, and then the core. But it's, it's, it's more than just like this idea of these muscles working. It's that they, they generate charge. And that's a really key point. It's, it's an electrical, it's an electricity that's going, there's voltage. And so when a client, you'll notice with planks, for example, they start shaking. <laughs> and that's because the voltage is dropping and that's because the load's too much. So you've got to go back and um, some will say after three, it starts to fatigue and they feel pain. Is that weakness? It's actually, there's no charge coming through if you see it in electrical terms. So I'm really trying to re-look re at how I... How I how I go through my rehab and just strengthening people, you know, with this whole, um, you know, connect, getting the whole body to to work together. And are you using those that kind of terminology and those phrases with them as a way to get them to see it differently? Absolutely. I mean, she even said in her testimony, "I feel like you switched on my muscles. I feel more connected." Yeah. Um, you know. So you give an example, you take someone who does a plank and they go into the plank in the push-up position, kind of like um, we're getting technique just now, but it's, and they'll say, oh, it feels so heavy. It feels really challenging. Then you stop, then you'll go loosen the hips up, do some posture work and they'll come back and then I'll do like 30 seconds and they'll be like, am I doing this correctly? Because it feels really light. Hmm. Now, I mean, what have you, what have you changed? Did you haven't increased their abdominal muscles? You know, something has changed. It's gone from really heavy to this feels ridiculously light. And that's because there's connection, you know. And I think that's what mm. we want to get in the pool from hauling to just feel like they're just floating through the water and float flowing through the water, you know. So and that's 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 the key. Yeah. It's, it's, that's uh yeah, that's it's a good and it's the same thing with swimming, is when you're swimming well, you feel light and you feel relaxed and your breathing's easy. It it correct. doesn't feel feel heavy. There was I was watching a video of Gwen Jorgensen who won the Olympic gold in 2016. And she talks about well, her coach had set a swim program and one of the effort levels that, that her coach wanted her to go at, he just called it tracing. And she explained it as tracing as though you've got a, a pencil and you're trying to not make any holes in the paper. You're just, or you're not trying to break the pencil. So just, just tracing really lightly. And that was part of a preset to the main set where he wanted her to stay relaxed and just feel very comfortable and just just really light, really easy. And I think that's a great way to think about your swimming or about a lot of the movements that you that you do. And the comparison I would make there would be to to surfing. And you see this at, at the top level of competition as well. When the guys try and go too hard, if they try and push a turn too hard, or they try and get more air than is required off a off a ramp, they end up overdoing it and they'll fall right. or they'll slip. It's when they're just yeah, loose and light, things are working together then naturally they just have this power in the water without trying to to force it where it, you, you see that lightness. So I think that's a, a really good way of thinking about it. Well, look, I mean, take us effortless swimming. I mean, I love it. Effortless. It's whether you're looking at golf or surfing, anybody likes ice skating. It's, it's just when, when professionals do things, it looks effortless. Mm. Um, but it's a good, you touch on a good point there as well. Like this, what I pick up, you know, is we, we, have, we all have different personalities and, and people who, you know, like who are ambitious, uh, they just they, we, we tend to gravitate. I know I've been guilty of that as well. Like we, we just try too hard sometimes and that, you know, try too hard to get your technique or you you just really want to get uh, something down. And that 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 trying too hard puts tension in the body. And and that tension is is in electrical terms is impedance or resistance or blocks the flow or slows down the flow. So it's it's just really a, not a, I wouldn't say it's a new way of looking at the body. It's just a, it's just kind of like putting all the puzzle pieces together now. One of the things that comes to mind there is I had a an athlete that I'm doing some stroke analysis with, and he was saying that he's not really feeling his lats working a lot when he's swimming. 
yet he's got a he's got a good catch. He's got the right rotation. He's doing all the things he needs to to be using his lats the right the right amount. And I, I think he was. Uh, I think he was of the belief that at the end of a session, my lats should be yeah, pretty pretty cooked. They should be feeling like they've really been used. But while you do want to use your lats, it's it's some of the muscles that you want to be using when you're actually swimming well. It'll be part lats, but everything's working together. So you won't necessarily just feel that fatigue in the lats. It's just going to, you'll be, yeah, you feel a little bit of it, but not necessarily. And so I I just had to change the way he thought about it is that um, we want them to be used. If you're doing the right positions, yes, it'll be there. But as you've sort of mentioned on uh, previous conversations, it's it's not just the, the lats working on their own. It's connected to different parts of the body. Can you go into right. some of those muscles that that are connected to the lats and how we may actually want to be thinking about that instead? Well, um, this, so there's just two points there. Number one is that the the lats they they're not nothing works in isolation in the body. So you know, as you're doing that pull fit, you've got a slight rotation. That rotation is driving is the is your oblique muscles, your your core rotational muscles, and the abdominals. So he's when you're doing that pull, it's getting it's getting power, and it goes back to my whole electrical thing again. Like it's the lats doing the work, but it's not that the lats have to be the only source of power. And mm. so, if you just think about just just doing like a pulling a band behind you, for example, eventually after 10, 20, 30 reps, your lats are going to just feel so pumped and fatigued because it's like you're just getting power from that muscle. Where in swimming, if you're able to with a kick from the opposite leg, so the right hand, left leg, as you get that kick and rotation. There's electricity that there's power coming to the lats the whole time. It's kind of like a, your your lat muscle has been replenished or um, recharged by other other muscles, and so it's not going to feel fatigued. Where if he's just swimming from the lats, he's gonna he's gonna fatigue and feel pumped. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, and that's and that's the thing about it is that I think he was doing everything he needed to to. Um, you know, he's, he's swimming really, really well, basically. And that showed with how his, his rotation was coming in. And um, yeah. And, and that's, that, that's the thing with swimming. It should be from the inside out from the core Correct. outwards Correct. or else you just cannot deliver that power to, to the extremities. If it's not from the, the inside out, you don't swim from your hands and feet going inwards because you've got no, no power source there, nothing central. So uh, you, we need to get that, that right and sometimes in in terms of drills how we develop someone's stroke you've got to start with some very basic movements like some kicking drills even with your arms by your side putting a snorkel on and some fins and just getting them to rotate side to side and keep the body together as they're going side to side and not having this big twist through the the body so just learning how to hold your body correctly is really step number one and that's uh, if that's not in place then it's going to be hard to change the other elements of it for you do you see that as being able to to squat well because i know on our previous podcast we've sort of talked about you as the you know the squat man that's like your your main move and getting that right is is very important so what what is that movement for you yeah and, and you know when you when we talk again why i'm such a passionate about squats is when you when you squat correctly that opens up the lower back joints that helps to strengthen the muscles to help maintain the normal curves of the spine um, it opens up the rotational centers. So we talk about your T12, L1, T11, and 10. That's kind of where the spine really uh, rotates there. And that's a, that's a very big problem or common problem with a lot of swimmers and just people in general with low back problems. So there's a squat is a great way to to free that up and to open up those those movements, those those sort of channels. Um, but it's it's just really just getting that getting once the core strong then the squat becomes easier then you can start to progressively load that and and that'll that'll definitely help uh, you know especially with lats because lats you may talk about rotational but that's a massive one if it's rotational restrictions the lats don't you know because lats is actually a rotational muscle we think of lats sort of like a shoulder pull down but actually lats if you think about a pull back like we've done in our videos that's that's actually what lats lats do. But a good point as well with the rotation is that it's something obviously as a swimming coach, but is to look for clients who do have poor posture. That's to get them set, maybe in the pool. I find like like people have got too much curve. Is to first get them in a better position and then go into the squat because they most people struggle with body awareness. And if you say like do you know correct the lower that they don't really like what do you, what do you kind of mean? Do I have to be here or there or 
and in the pools and even a different feeling you're trying to breathe and not drown so you kind of like <laughs> where my pelvis is I don't even know like I can't even feel my pelvis in the pool like like so it's to, just to get them set them right in the in the pool and then they, they get that connection quite quickly but that's kind of the work we do as well because you don't, they don't really want to have to think about it too much you don't want to um, have to but a, a good point as well you brought up with that core and it's such a tricky balance depends on, on each person but it's to not to like uh, over uh, we talked about that bracing you don't want to brace too much in the pool because you lose rotation. You know, you uh, some clients really want to suck in their tummy muscles as mm. far as they can. And that 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 really restricts movement. And it acts as a barrier. It actually slows down the, we talk about again, electrical stuff again. So, Yeah, that's a that's a tricky one, isn't it? Because you, you need some tautness and stability through the core and through the hips, Correct. but it's only very light. And the Correct. the way that I've explained that, to some of my swimmers is that if you were to pick up a glass of, of water, you wouldn't grab that glass really hard and try and crush it. You'd have just enough tension to, to hold the glass and not let it slip. That's that's Correct. a good amount of tension that you sort of hold through there. That's a good amount of tautness to hold through your body. And uh, But it, it takes a while to, to learn, especially in a foreign environment like water. If you're not an experienced swimmer, sometimes you can either go too too loose and relaxed or, or too stiff and, and tense. So it takes a little bit of practice to, to get there. But I really like your point of learning something, getting something right out of the pool first, because if you can't get it right out of the pool in a stable environment, it is going to be very hard to get it right in the, in the water. And even just, uh, I used to coach at one of the main pools in Melbourne and I'd see some of the Australian Olympic team there training, they'd be doing a bit of a warm up. And they'd be on, uh, one of the things was just on all fours. So they're on their knees, they're on their hands, and they're just doing uh, like alternating left yeah, arm. Superman, out. Sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so one foot, one leg, just bringing it out and trying to keep the body still. So not letting that Correct. lower back arch. And they were very Correct. good at it. But when I've done that in the past with with some athletes, initially it's there's a lot of movement going on. There's instability through the body. The, the lower Correct. back is arching. Uh, they don't know if their hand is too high or their legs up too high. So it, it, even something as simple as that can be quite challenging until you just bring yourself to to that awareness of of where your the different parts of your body are. Yeah, and 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 again, that's a listeners who it's they maybe even do that because that's quite a standard exercise across the board in most back pain rehabilitation programs, swimming programs. It's it's just that, is that if they can't get the tummy to work, is to find out again why is the tummy or the core muscles not getting involved in this process, and that's kind of what we do on online. And as you say, go through the diagnostics to see like because that's very frustrating when someone is planking, is doing supermans, is trying to get stronger. But there's just no connection. It's like having the Wi-Fi and the router and everything, but your ISP, your internet service provider, is just not playing the game. And, and so you can do all the settings and go through all the movements. But if you're not getting that signal from the ISP, it's 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 a challenge. And, and, and so that's kind of – that's like you talk about that root thing, and I think that's where for people who, who enjoy exercises out of the pool exercises and, and really want to get that feeling, I think this is a huge – a huge uh, makes a huge difference – not only just to injuries, but to just general performance, like having a, again, like Wi-Fi is nothing worse than having like a bad signal. You just, you know, you just can't do anything and it's frustrating. Yeah. Or like South Africa, you have, you have no electricity. It's just like, <laughs> it's, it's <not> even worse. <laughs> you can't even swim. You know? Yeah, I'll, I'll take no Wi-Fi over no electricity any day of the week. <laughs> uh, but even, even just having, yeah, that's right. No no internet, no signal is, is very frustrating. And uh, to have that comparison of uh, that's kind of like your core when it's not working well. It's uh, I totally, totally get it. So, um, I, I, and the thing with all of this is that once, and I'm speaking from my own experience, once you get into it and once you start to understand where your limitations are, where those, those blocks are, and you start to get better and you start to move better. What I've noticed when I swim, what I've noticed when I surf is I'm just, I'm just, so much better at those things i get into flow much easier and i see that progression and i can see that that improvement so it's quite uh, not addictive i'd say but it's 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 really it's this very positive feedback loop that you you get from it when you start to see how these little changes can uh how they can impact you down the track but even like shoulder mobility as well you know you put a stick behind you and you kind of do these shoulder movement it's like it, it it 
I, I, my shoulders have, have, I've been doing a lot of core and planking and squatting as well. And, and I just feel like it's just so much easier. And I, I don't spend hours stretching. It's just, it's just, it's like the body lets go of that tension. And there's, there's, there's a connection, that connection, actually the connection improves the whole mobility as well, because now the other muscles can relax. And that's kind of what you're trying to do. You're trying to stretch them out and relax them. So I mean, swimming, it's, there's nothing better than feeling loose in the pool. It's just that freedom is, and connection. Like when you feel like your shoulders, you know, is catching and your hip doesn't want to quite kick, you know. And and as, I mean, I'm not I'm not old. I'm only 43. But like what I find is like I'm I'm feeling like my best. Like, I, like I've never been this mobile and this connected and strong. Like it's it's such a, you know, you think like, you know, I'm going to be 21. But like I'm seeing people even in their 80s. And this is like on my other work that I do. That are like they're feeling their best at eighty, you know. So that that that's that's incredible, you know. Yeah, that's it's so promising, isn't it? And it goes to show that it is possible to still be feeling good as you as you get into your your later years. And I think swimming is one of those activities that you can do for life. And my nan's ninety four now, and she wow. still goes to the okay. pool two or three times a week uh, and does a does a few laps. And I think, geez, if if she can do that at, at ninety four then that's to me that's quite inspiring and, and that's something that I want to be doing as, as I get into my later years as well and if you can have a really good routine out of the pool that assists with that then you're going to be looking looking good as you as you get older so uh Carl I really appreciate you being on the the podcast uh, those that are listening if you're a member you'll see Carl's functional movement course inside the membership you can also purchase it separ- separately which I'll put in the show notes uh, but Carl anyone who's listening who might be having some sort of shoulder pain or hip pain or any any issues with uh, with how they're moving what's the best way for them to get in contact with you and and perhaps set up a, a zoom call or, or something along those lines to get that fixed because we know what it's like being in pain it's uh, it's not much fun when you haven't got your health yet you haven't got much so uh, what's the best way to That's get in correct. contact yeah there's two ways on my email address which is call wellness at gmail.com and call will be with a c call wellness at gmail and then callreadercoaching.com and they can leave and uh, reach me there or, or there's my office are all out there um but yeah it's, even on through the membership they can can you know drop me a message on your on your membership portal there and um yes yeah, it's, it's 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 great it's, it's so it's you know a lot of people are reaching out and just even if it's one session or a couple of sessions or it's personal training just to get those you know whatever you need and um just to get you along the way you don't have to be stuck in pain. I think that's 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 what you're saying. You know, just just there's a few simple things that can be changed, and and you're away. Absolutely. Thanks again, Carl. I'm looking forward to having you back on sometime in the near future. Thanks, Brandon. Always a pleasure. Keep well.